It's your boy Tommy D. The show is philanthropy and focus. I better get out that out of the way before I rant about what it's like being a nonprofit sector connector. Actually, the nonprofit sector connector. Um, what a special week it's been. I mean, I was out with Long Island Coalition for the Homeless out here on Long Island. Well, that's in the name, so it was out here on Long Island. Uh, thanks to the folks over at TD Bank for inviting me. That was day number 47 of hashtag 60 days of service. I love to use the word hashtag to actually say hashtag. Um, that was a pound sign when we were kids. <laughs> you know, it wasn't always a hashtag, Gene Butler, right? I was like, that was the pound <laughs> sign. Like pound whatever on your on your phone. <laughs> now it's a hashtag. But I I uh I mean, even last night I was out at Malloy University, formerly Malloy College out here in Long Island, but I was at Malloy University uh because I was invited to an event for their capstone program to celebrate the 10-year anniversary of the capstone program they have there, which features nonprofit organizations. So their undergrad students as well as their graduate students participate in this capstone where they become consultants for nonprofit organizations. And we had this fortunate opportunity, I say we, the Lindy Lou Foundation, which is a family foundation in memory of my cousin Linda who passed a number of years ago. And uh, our friend Ellen White from Backyard Players and Friends, who's been here on Philanthropy and Focus, suggested that the Lindy Lou Foundation be the uh, focus, <laughs> if you will, of the Capstone program. So I, I met some great folks out there at uh, at Malloy last night, and and this is just what it's like being involved in the nonprofit sector. I'm involved in special work all the time. It's very important, and it all was an idea. Philanthropy and Focus was an idea, and as I come to you this morning. At 10.03 Eastern Time on a Friday morning on 4-21-2023, this is the 115th episode of an idea. It was an idea. I said, I'm going to have a show, and I did. And I tell you that because I'm excited about it, and I'm very proud of what we're accomplishing here with this program. But I've realized in this week alone with some relationships I've made that man, we're just getting started. There are, I thought this program was about recognizing the great work that nonprofits are doing. And it is about that. But I'm realizing my responsibility is bigger than that. And there are certain issues in this country that we need to deal with. There are certain issues in this planet that we need to deal with. We're, we, we may reflect on them today. I think we'll be in, inside of a mental health conversation at some point during this morning's conversation with Gene Butler from Encourage Kids Foundation. So if it comes up what I'm talking about, there are problems in this world that we need to fix. And somebody's got to get out there and start talking about it. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I got a big mouth. So maybe I'm the guy that's going to talk about a lot of this stuff. So we'll table some of that for now. Uh, without MJ Padone being a colleague and friend from Indra Public Relations, I probably don't meet Gene Butler because I probably don't know about Encourage Kids Foundation, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to do what we do on this show every single time that we've done for 114 episodes so far. And we're going to talk about the leader of the organization. We're going to learn who the leader is, what she has done, what she's done professionally in the for-profit world, what she's done philanthropically, and how Gene Butler has landed in the chief executive and officer seat here at the Encourage Kids Foundation and the special work that this organization is doing. But before we do any of that, I'd like to say, hello, Jean. How are you? Hello, Tommy. What's I'm doing well, on? thanks. Thank you for having me. I am glad you're here. I will tell you, um, MJ has been like, Tommy, you got to get Jean on the show. This has to happen. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, we're going to make it happen. I promise we're going to make it happen. I will see, uh, I'll see MJ on Tuesday night. We got the Long Island Imagine Awards out here on Long Island. Shout out to Ken Serini, who's a good friend of mine who founded the Imagine Awards. What a special night that is. Gene, there's going to be four or 500 people who are all about the nonprofit sector in that room. And I think I told you the other day, yes. the New York City Imagine Awards will be at Gostavinos. I don't know yep. if that's how you, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but my hand wants to go up and go it Ghost. <laughs> People say to me, this just happened to me the other day. I was talking to this guy named Rocco and he goes, uh, he goes, you're Italian, right? I go, I don't know, dude. I go, I'm from Long Island. I've never been to Italy. My father's <laughs> father was born in this country. I'm not not saying I'm Italian, but to some guy that just got here from Milan and me are not exactly the same thing. I mean, <laughs> I'm from Long Island. I'm from Franklin Square. If that means anything, <laughs> anybody listening. So it was basically might be, it's a pretty Italian neighborhood anyway, but Anyway, Gostavinos is the is where we'll do the event in October. If you want to know the the New York City Imagine Awards applications are out right now. That means it is, it is the application phase. Type in NYC Imagine Awards into your Google machine, and you will get back where you got to go. And let's just say you can't find it, or you want to talk to me, uh, send me an email. 
Tommy D at philanthropyandfocus.com, P-H-O-C-U-S. And I love this Instagram thing. I'm digging it. So Tommy D dot NYC on Instagram and find me other places. I'm everywhere. Gene, that's the intro. Let's get into this. Let's get into the story. I want to read a little bit of your background, but what I really like to do is I mm-hmm. like the person to tell their story, not me to read their story off of a form document that I had you fill out in order to come on the show. That being said, I will set up some of this. 25 years of experience of a variety of executive roles in business and philanthropy, including Time Warner Incorporated, where you received the Award of Excellence for Outstanding Financial Contribution from Time Warner's executive management team. You were the chief executive of the Toy Foundation, uh, which did programs with Ronald McDonald House, Boys and Girls Club of America, and the U.S. Department of Defense, among others. So you have a, a BA in economics from the College of Holy Cross. It's up in Boston, right? Uh, Worcester. Worcester. Oh, yes. Worcester, man. Yeah, dude. I know it. I know it. My sister did some uh, externship, internship in Worcester. Yeah. Uh, isn't it Worcester? No, it's Worcester, right? Right. Exactly. <laughs> And an MBA in marketing from Fordham University, Gabelli School of Business, go Rams, and yep. global MBA program from Gabelli as well. So let's get into it, Gene. I mean, how how does this career, what drew you to, I mean, where you are now running this very important organization, which we're going to talk about, mm-hmm. did you see, did you have your sights set early on to be very involved in the philanthropic world, in the nonprofit world? Let's talk about that. I did not, Tommy. Um, I I actually started my career on Wall Street in uh, institutional equity sales. And I I realized that I needed um, a little bit more creativity and autonomy. So from there, I moved into the media and entertainment industry where uh, I actually built businesses um, in video and television, music, Uh, magazines, um, some book product. And that was a really fantastic experience because it taught me at a very young age um, the importance of how to manage profitable business segments. And really, I applied that corporate skill set then later um, in the children's toy industry to building a foundation for the entire toy industry that represented the philanthropic commitment of companies uh, from the largest to the smallest and everywhere in between. Um, They really wanted to serve children in need. And for us at the time, that meant kids who were sick, Mm -hmm. um, impoverished, kids in foster care, kids in military families, and kids who were suffering in the wake of natural disasters. We had done um, a lot of work uh, in the aftermath of um, Katrina and Hurricane Sandy. So it, it was really the amalgamation, I think, of everything I had done in my career up until the point I had been asked to the, by the toy industry to um, design and create this philanthropic foundation. And I didn't even realize that I had such deep passion for nonprofit until that time. I so it that. really took root. I want to know about this toy, the toy foundation a little more. I want to understand what it was all about. I just can't help myself but to see Josh Baskin, if, if you're not getting that name, Tom Hanks in big yeah. when, he, yes. when he was in the toy business. And like, he was just like, it was like perfect because he was still a kid, even though he was a man, right? Yep. But guys, if you haven't seen big, I don't know what you're doing. I mean, got to see big. <laughs> um, Josh Baskin, he he goes to the Zoltar machine because he can't go on the roller coaster with a girl he's got a crush on because he's not tall enough. So he goes to the machine, he puts a quarter in the machine, he says, I want to be big. He wakes up the next morning, he's a man. <laughs> you know, he was a, a 12-year-old boy and now he's, you know, 25-year-old man. He goes and gets a job and he's working in the toy business, right? And he's got the yep. he's got big loft in the city, he's got a trampoline. I this has nothing to do with the story we're telling, but it's what happens on this show sometimes. It's 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 entertaining me and maybe it entertains some of the people listening. Go see the movie big. But he he just says he's got the, the child's heart still. So he yeah. says when they're talking about the toys, this is like a, a poignant moment, I think. They say he, 
they're he, they're presenting a toy. He goes, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Like, and again, he's a kid. So the adults are like, what do you mean you don't get it? But the point is he understood what kids wanted. It had to be something that would be fun for kids. Tell me about what that was like for you as an adult person trying to understand what kids wanted. Yes, it, it was an incredible period. It's it's really a special industry filled with a lot of happy people. Mm. Because think about it. Um, all they want to do is make kids happy. So uh, what a rewarding feeling, but I'm glad you brought it up, Tommy, because I learned during my time there that a toy is not just a toy. For these kids who were in need, a toy symbolized so much more than the physical object. It meant that someone cared about them. It provided them with a distraction from a frightening uh, medical diagnosis or procedure. Um, it was a way for uh, kids on military bases to feel normal, if only for a little while, um, because they're there isolated, missing a parent who's deployed. So um, I love that you brought that up because uh, it, it, it's so much more than an object. Wow. And it's the feeling that it engenders that you, it's priceless. I think about that sometimes. And, you know, being, I guess, what I would consider middle class, um, you know, grew up middle class, maybe, I don't know, I don't think we're up middle class. So just regular folk living here on Long Island. I, my kids don't want for anything. And I always, you know, I make this joke sometimes about, okay, what are we going to do? What, what type of plastic are we going to bring into the house this holiday? Right. You know, like, because it was just, it's always some form of, if it's my daughter's, when they were younger, it would be pink, all pink castles, <laughs> yep. dolls or whatever. And if it's the boys, it's Paw Patrol. I mean, even my mm -hmm. younger eight now, Paw Patrol, I guess, isn't as cool as it used to be because he sold all his Paw Patrol stuff at, uh, <laughs> at a garage sale. <laughs> Made a couple of but it was always like, all right, well, let's, we got to move out all the old plastic and bring in all the new plastic. But I, I say that to be silly, but the thing about it is some children don't have anything. Exactly. And anything that they can get shows that they're cared for and that mm -hmm. someone is concerned for them. And I, and yep. I guess, I, you know, I've done some work with some organizations, specifically, specifically a group called Little Flower Family and Children's Association. They have, uh, they're very involved in the, in the foster space and the, and uh -huh. the so I, I did some work with them around Christmas time. I guess it was last year, helping them in their toy room because mm -hmm. they, you know, they have these. Um, I guess you would call caseworkers in each of these foster communities, foster uh, settings, and they would say we were packaging up gifts to go out to each building. This building in Brooklyn, this building in Queens, this building yes. in Long Island, whatever it would be, right? So um, because uh, you know, again, growing up having pretty much everything we wanted, mm -hmm. I. I I try and and with my children, I try to give them that context that not everybody has that stuff. Absolutely. You know? And and I'll never forget, we did an event. Oh gosh, I think it was about 103 degrees um a couple of years ago. We did an event in Newark and it was for foster children, and we were giving them toys. And Tommy, I will never forget this little girl came up to me and she was shell-shocked that she was allowed to keep this toy she had never had a toy of her own and she thought that she was going to have to give it back to us because think about it those kids it's it's hand-me-downs right and it's all used and she was overjoyed that she got to keep that as her own toy right so so whatever it was a doll you know a ball yep. jump rope whatever it was it was more than a ball or a doll or a jump rope. It was representative of it was hers. It was something yes. that she had. It was her possession and it was given to her. So that mm -hmm. that set, what trajectory went on in the, in the future of that little girl, maybe yep. because now she had received something and she knew someone cared and was interested. That's right. That's right. And that's the beauty of philanthropy, isn't it? I think so, yeah. I think so. I get chills right now. Plant those seeds. Like under all this long hair, there's little hair sticking up on the back of my neck because that's like, that's the stuff. I was watching something the other day. And actually, no, it was, I was telling you earlier, I was watching the episode I did of this show last week. And my guest last week, Stephen Chassman from the Long Island Coalition of Alcohol and Drug Dependency, he made a comment and he go, he said, we're, 
the thing about when people are in pain, it's because they're so focused on the self. Mm -hmm. Focus on how it's tough for me and this head of mine and all this stuff. You know, then we're just going to, we're going to be in this negative place. But when we focus on others, right? I could tell you there's been a Monday or Tuesday morning where I wake up and I'm just kind of low. And yeah. I'll and if I have the time, and if this has happened twice for in the last six months, if I have the time and I can get things off my kind of clear the decks on my calendar, I go to a nonprofit. There's one, there's a place in my neighborhood called, called Nosh, which is a uh it's a pantry, food pantry, not too far from where I live. And I just went there and I first I went to Dunkin' Donuts and I got a box of coffee. And I got a bunch of donuts and maybe some bagels. I can't remember. And I brought it to the, the volunteers working that I'm not asking for everybody's applause. This is not what it's about. I'm saying I did this and it was a little bit selfish because I was kind of low and I went out and did for others who were doing for others who were doing for others. Right. And they tell two people and, they tell, and I right. went and I felt better. Yep. Okay. So the idea is that that's what philanthropy is to me. Yep. Unfortunately, I think the word philanthropy has been a very loaded word. And you know, they, it's there's a lot of connotations mixed up into it. Maybe we'll talk about it, maybe we won't, but I've talked about it on this program before. But at the end of the day, what it's about, it's it's about love, it's mm-hmm. about compassion, it's about caring for others and helping others. That's what the, the root of the word. I'll look it up during the break, but that's what that's what it really means to me. So I, I, this has been, I, this is great. We're just getting warmed up, Gene Butler. I'm so I excited. know, I know. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're probably way over for a break anyway. When we come back, I want to dive into a little bit about, can give me the nuts and bolts for about a minute about what the Toy Foundation was and how you in, interact with all these big corporations and stuff. And then, that, then we're going to get into Encourage Kids, your mm-hmm. role at Encourage Kids, the programs and the impact. And then this new, um, this new mental health program that I really want to get into because obviously yep. critically important. This is Philanthropy and Focus, Gene Butler, and your boy, the nonprofit sector connector. Tommy D, right back. Are you a business owner? Do you want to be a business owner? Do you work with business owners? Hi, I'm Stephen Fry, your small and medium-sized business or SMB guy, and I'm the host of the new show, Always Friday. While I love to have fun on my show, we take those Friday feelings of freedom and clarity to discuss popular topics on the minds of SMBs today. Please join me and my various special guests on Friday at 11 a.m. on talkradio.nyc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant, and on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. Are you on edge? Hey, we live in challenging, edgy times, so let's lean in. I'm Sandra Bargeman, the host of The Edge of Every Day, which airs each Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. Tune in live with me and my friends and colleagues as we share stories and perspectives about pushing boundaries and exploring our rough edges. That's The Edge of Every Day on Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC. Uplift, educate, empower. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Tommy in his attic. Gene Butler, welcome back from the break. So when you were talking about music videos and things you were doing in the past and stuff like that and and, and uh, entertainment space, I was going to say to you, I used to ask folks to sing my theme song when I came back. So I didn't know if you were a performer or not. In that <laughs> Tommy, no. <laughs> I'm not a performer. I was the business side. It always seems to be that. That's what everybody seems to say. I have no problem singing on my show, but other people seem to have a problem singing on my show. I still have to take those singing lessons, gang, so I apologize. I haven't done it yet, but sometimes things are just natural, and maybe I'm just a natural crooner 
in <laughs> at least inside of my head in the gray matter. All right, Gene, let's let's go back to it. You are the CEO of Encourage Kids Foundation, but let's just put a bow on this thing about the toy yes. foundation. I really want to understand what that was, and is it still going on as well? Um, it is still going on. It's taken um, a bit of a different shape um, since I left there. Uh, and they've actually gone into um, the hospital space as well. But when I was there, we built these really incredible direct service programs. And a lot of them were first ever national toy distribution programs. For example, uh, we served every branch of the US military and traveled the globe um, administering these programs. And one thing really stood out for me, Tommy, and that is whether we were in Japan or Guantanamo Bay or Germany um, on these military installations, children need to play. Yeah. And they not everyone has the opportunity to play. And that really does seem to be a universal need um, among children everywhere. So I, I never forgot that. And it didn't matter what language they spoke. They, they need to play. It's a fundamental need. So when I uh, came to encourage kids, I thought, wow, there is so much commonality between what I had been doing and what encourage kids needs now. And really that, that opportunity um, to play and to express themselves and to be cared for, um, those all struck an emotional chord with me. That makes so much sense. And I'm going to do a little bit on encourage kids, but I, I just want to add to something you said, and I can't agree with you more. Children need to play, but I would agree wholeheartedly, but I'm going to say a little more adults need to play. I don't know what age it is that we decide that we're not supposed to play anymore. And I don't mean, no. you know, play a pickup game of basketball. We need to be no. silly. We need to have, we need to do a radio show and sing on the show when you want to. I mean, just be silly. Just play. Gosh, man. When, where, why do we have to be so serious? <laughs> I, like, like, I just, and again, I'm, I, I'm not being judgmental. Maybe I am, maybe a little bit, but I think it's about just have fun. Have fun. Yep. Do the thing. Do the thing. Have fun. Try something out. Screw something up. I guarantee you're going to all screw something up today. I know I'm going to do it a bunch of times. Make a couple of mistakes and then you learn and then you do something different. But just play. Play a little bit. Since 1985, the Encourage Kids Foundation has been committed to making hospitals a better place to get better for kids and families. That's what you're talking about. Serving more than one million children annually. Serving more than one million children annually. Okay, that's a lot of kids that you're making an impact on. That's a lot of families that you're making an impact on. And when you're doing that, you're it says you're offering relief from the constant burden of treatment. Look, I did a video leading up to this show last week, and I do that every week to promote. And I started the video like this. Your child is sick. Your child has a serious illness. What does that do to the family? And that was what I was trying to do to promote our conversation today because mm -hmm. I wanted to bring a bit of the pain when I did that video because I don't know. I, I, My wife and I have four children and we are blessed that they are healthy children. Mm -hmm. But I, when I looked at the statistics and things like that, um, it, it's not atypical for children because what i was doing that when i did that video is i knocked off a bunch of statistics of of how many children are in, in uh uh have different illnesses and end up in in the hospital for treatment and things like that and it wasn't a low number so this impacts that young person who's scared i must give a shout out to my friend kylie mcgrain who i don't know if you know yet but you need to know her uh it's uh, their organization is a moment of magic and they dress up like princesses and superheroes and go into the hospitals and i did a day of service with kylie out at um saint mary's hospital in bayside we put a bunch of these bravery bags together and brought them up to saint mary's uh, i'll have to connect you but yeah i love that right we need to give these children and families mm -hmm. an opportunity to play to have respite right gene i mean that's mm -hmm. the biggest thing what we're talking about right Absolutely. And um, it's interesting when you brought that point up about, oh, your child is sick. It's, it's important to note, you know, it's not just the child who experiences the trauma of 
an illness. It's the entire family. And, and sometimes their needs are overlooked. Often the siblings, right? Yep. I know this, yeah. I know this work we do with the, the, uh, you know, having a child, um, that has intellectual or developmental disabilities, when a family has a child with those needs, sometimes the attention and focus, not sometimes, yes. often the attention and focus is on the child with the needs. In this case, yes. the child might, might be medically fragile, has the, is getting much of the focus for obvious reasons, right? Yep. Yep. The parents, parents don't want to not or, or, or ignore that other child or children it's just what happens, you know, where's the, where's the need? We got to go to the need. We got to deal with that situation. It's very challenging. I would say for families to be able to go, I mean, look, we don't have any of those types of needs in my house. And I know I get some feedback that somebody's getting more attention than somebody else. I think right. that what they refer to it as dad, you're favoriting. Yes. <laughs> my answer is usually, well, that child is being much nicer to me than you are. <laughs> But anyway, now it was a live show. Now it's on record. Now it's in. It's it's on the internet forever. I better be careful. But uh, the, the moral of the story, though, for me is we we have to be able to support the whole family, right? Absolutely. And you know, a, a few things that really attracted me to this organization. Uh, I love that phrase, humanizing healthcare for children. Mm -hmm. That spoke to me. I also loved that this organization has direct relationships with more than 300 hospitals around the country. So when, when people are donating to us, um, primarily funds, this isn't a pass-through. We are in direct communication with hospitals, um, mostly child life specialists and other administrators. So we are hearing directly from them what the needs are. And that really, in my opinion, differentiates and encourage kids from um, some of the other uh, organizations out there that are in this space. So that was important to me as well. And then finally, um, I said, oh boy, this organization is well known within the hospital community, but I don't think they're as well known you know, out there to the general public and they need to be because they're doing wonderful work and they need to be bigger. So I'm a business builder and, and that appealed to me as well. That's incredible, see, but that's, you know, we talk about, or I, I talk about often the strategic alliance, if you will, the partnership, you know? Yes. And and, and I remember as a younger person, I felt like, you know, oh, well, you know, I'm interviewing. I'm like looking up. If, if you're listening to me on the radio, I'm like looking up, like I'm interviewing to get a job at your place. Well, yeah. as I got older, it was like, no, 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 no. We're interviewing each other yes. to see if this would be a good partnership. And I'm not speaking just if you're interviewing folks at a C-level position. If you're interviewing as a sales producer role, if you're yes. interviewing as a manufacturing person in a company listen and especially i think more than ever in my at least in my lifetime i've never seen more uh how do i say where the the employee or the candidate has so much leverage and we know that now but mm -hmm. think in terms of look you're going to be dedicating many of your hours and your time away from your family away from other interests to this company whatever it is think in terms of is this in alignment with what i do is it in alignment with who i am and do i feel like i'm being i'm i'm filling much of my buckets with the passion piece of what it is because you know what if it isn't go yeah. find another place to go because you know there's for the for most people the money is it, it's close where you go mm -hmm. if you go here you go across the street it's going to be close right so the point is find a place where you're going to you know where you're going to jive with the culture and and you're really going to feel fulfilled and then what do they always say you know you, you never work a day in your life when you love what you do yep. Love as much of your day as you possibly can. It ain't going to be 100%. Well, maybe some people it might be, but some things you got to just have to do. My point of it is you, it sounds like, and, and again, as somebody in, in your background and, and your pedigree and the work you've done, Gene, it was probably a, a, a conversation of equals, right? Mm -hmm. This is a really special, awesome organization. This is a really special, awesome leader. Let's get together. Does that mean it's a fit? I'm not sure, right? right. We have 
I have to go through that process. You have to test it all out. I love your advice, Tommy, because um, especially some of the younger people who are out there interviewing, I don't think they realize that they should be interviewing the organization as much as they're being interviewed because mm-hmm. cultural fit can trump everything else. Yeah. yeah, well, we know it. And and I'm not going to say, you know, the millennials because millennials are now 40 years old. So enough with yeah. this millennial thing. But like that, our newer, younger generation yep. is, is thoughtful and mindful of, is my company that I'm working with doing the right thing? Are they value yes. aligned? doing are they practicing corporate social responsibility are they saving the planet oh and can i make a living here right like i don't know if that's the exact order right no you you hit on such a great point that is what people care about now maybe i don't want to speak for you but maybe when you and i you know back in the day were interviewing um it wasn't as much about purpose and mission and does this speak to my core values it was about okay how quickly can i advance are they going to pay me what i need but i i I really appreciate that it has shifted to um hey does this make me feel good will i feel proud telling my friends and family what i do for a living 100%. Hundred percent. I, I mean, that's the, we got to go to break in a sec, but that's the whole thing for for where, and that's why I say like I'm so tired of everybody saying you know the millennials are this and the millennials is that. You know, a good friend of mine a couple of years ago was like, millennials are divorced. Millennials have kids in college. Like, what are yeah. we talking about? Like, what this is not this is not like a 19 year old kid you know living in the basement drinking Gatorade. Like, this, this, you know, what I want to say is there's all these generations together in the workplace. Last I count, I think it was five different generations of workplace. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's six now. I don't know. Point of the matter though is we, we can learn so much from each other. And yes. if that that younger generation, and I'm a cusper. I was born in 78. So if you read the right article, you know, I, I'm not a digital native. I remember AOL, the man running across the screen like that. I remember that. <laughs> if you don't get that, we'll have to talk another time. But um, I think though, there's so much we can continue to learn from each other. And if when it is, does this jive with my passion and my purpose and everything like that? My purpose is I better get to a commercial break so we can come back and talk more. Philanthropy and focus. We'll be right back. Are you passionate about the conversation around racism? Hi, I'm Reverend Dr. TLC, host of the Dismantle Racism Show, which airs every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on talkradio.nyc. Join me and my amazing guests as we discuss ways to uncover, dismantle, and eradicate racism. That's Thursdays at 11 o'clock a.m. on talkradio.nyc. In a post-COVID world, you may have many unanswered questions regarding your health. Are you looking to live a healthier lifestyle? Do you have a desire to learn more about mental health and enhance your quality of life? Or do you just want to participate in self-understanding and awareness? I'm Frank R. Harrison, host of Frank About Health, and each Thursday, I will tackle these questions and work to enlighten you. Tune in every Thursday at 5 p.m. on talkradio.nyc, and I will be Frank About Health to advocate for all of us. Hey everybody, it's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy in Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Join Tommy in his attic. Don't like really join me in the attic. Like, don't show up at the house. What we're encouraging you to do, that call to action at the end, shout out to Uncle Brendan Levy. But the shout out or the call to action is pay attention to the show. Pay attention to pay attention to the change we're making. If you really want to join me in the attic, you're gonna be not impressed. It's just it's just a little room on the top of the house below the roof. But anyway, that's my silliness about the attic. 
since 1985, this organization has been around Encourage Kids Foundation. Over 35 years, they've invested more than $50 million, $50 million to help medically challenge children and their families through partnerships with more than 300 hospitals nationwide, as we just talked about in that last segment. This is such a great conversation. We're having Gene Butler. I just want to just like kind of shoot the breeze with you and just like kick it. But we do have some things we got to hit upon to be here today because I don't want to look back and go, oh, no, we didn't say that or we didn't talk about that. So we must go to programs. We must go to what it looks like for the organization in a day in and day out basis, if you could. And then I obviously want to talk about, you know, um, the mental health program that you and I talked about earlier this week. Mm -hmm. So why don't you start us off a little bit about programming stuff? Yeah. So, you know, programs, they're really the engine that drive a nonprofit because without programs, how can you then go to donors and report back on results or, hey, this is what our organization has achieved. Um, please join us in this endeavor. So it's it's very critical that your programs speak to the organization's mission. And these programs certainly do. Um, we have a pediatric hospital support program And that's what I alluded to earlier, Tommy, where I said we have a direct line to all of these hospitals and we hear what they need. So this pediatric hospital support program of ours, that allows us to resource um, things like music therapy, incredibly important, by the way, Um, creative arts therapy, um, sometimes playrooms. Um, sometimes facility dogs and service animals. And I I loved the name of that organization, um, A Moment of Magic, because I feel like we're providing magical moments for these children and families in hospitals. You will love, you will absolutely love to meet Kylie McGrain. And I feel like I must tell her story really quick since you brought her uh, organization up again. She was going to school up in Riverdale, New York. I believe it's Mount St. Vincent's, which is a very philanthropic focused school that I didn't know anything about. She was working in an after school program because everyone there did service as part of your undergrad. It was what you did, right? So mm-hmm. she was working in an after school program in the Bronx. She goes home for a holiday break, finds out that that program is, is lost funding. And when she goes back to school, she won't have a project to be involved with. Sitting on the couch with her mom in the movie Frozen, let it go, let it go, that movie, right? So so Frozen comes on and her mom goes, Kylie, you look just like Elsa. And like, that was it. So she then, with one of her colleagues, goes back to college. They built an entire business. They went to the business school. They got... They built this. It's just, it's only like seven, I think seven or eight years in the making. Um, It was her and a friend of hers that they would go to these hospitals dressed like princesses and just play with the children. Let me go back to my notes today, Gene Butler. I love that. I love that. Children need to be playing. That is a quote from you. Children need to play, right? That's what it is. Just, this may sound incorrect. I'm just going to say, just because a child is experiencing an illness and they're in the hospital does not mean they're not a child and they need to play. In fact, I'd argue they probably need play more. So they need to be distracted from the the pins and the pricks and the medicine and this, and this, if they're sick with something and God, Oh my God, God, we're so blessed. Everybody just be grateful for what you have. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's so Kylie's organization. So, and then they blew up on YouTube, millions and millions and millions of views. And now they got chapters across all types of universities and sororities. And, and again, what is that Gene? an idea? Yep. Spark a figment, right. In someone's imagination, her mom says you look like Elsa. And therefore this organization helps all these children, not only the children they're helping, but what does it do for the young people, the college people, that are in these sororities and fraternities that are doing this work. You know yeah. what? If you're in a for, uh, fraternity or sorority, it's not just about partying, gang. It's about making the world a better place. Says Tommy. Uh, I, lo- I love that story, Tommy. Really well, Thank you for really sharing well. that. So Absolutely. inspirational. Um, yeah. Now, our our one of our second programs is um, the Send a Smile, Send a Bear. And this takes me back to my toy industry nice. roots, right? right? Because it's it's a it's a cuddly teddy bear um, that we send to kids in hospitals. And again, 
this bear is more than a toy. And uh, we are very appreciative of the fact that hospitals have shared with us, this bear allows child life specialists and hospital personnel to um, create these play interventions with the kids. And more importantly, they are educating the kids using our bears about what it's like to get an IV, to get a needle. So they're demonstrating on the bears uh, what can what's going to happen medically. So they're used for medical education and they're used to comfort these kids and the family members. And we're hearing that that the bears, and I can show you one of them. I was hoping you were going to have a bear to show me. I was like, where's the <laughs> He's wrapped in plastic for sanitary reasons. Let me see his face. Um, move a little closer to the camera. Like, move. I don't know what we do here. I see. Oh, there he is. There he is. Oh, hey there, bear. I'll take him out. Right. How about that? All right. If you have to give me that one since you took him out, I'll take him. I'm kidding. I'm only. <laughs> oh, he's beautiful. What's his name? Yeah. Let's call him Teddy. Can we call him Teddy Bear? Teddy, Teddy, exactly. Yeah, so um, this is a, a, a really big program for us, very successful. And there's usually a waiting list for the these bears. Bear. Really? And we're going to be expanding this program across the country and probably um, redesigning this bear um, because it's, it's important to keep up with the times. We'd like to add on a smaller bear for um, very young children in the NICU. Yeah. Oh, and wow. um, this is this is a friend. For, oh my for God, I love it. I love it, it's beautiful. See, this yeah. is the thing, we need play, we need toys. Toys are more than just toys, we talked about that. So mm -hmm. I, I wanna ask you, because we're, believe it or not, I told you this was gonna happen, we're gonna run out of time before we run out of words. We're gonna go mm -hmm. to one last break. When we come back, I want, I want you to finish if there's anything on the programming, and then we really gotta get into this piece on this mental, the mental, mental health. Tommy, per perfect segue, because sure. mental health, that's our third program. I right, didn't work out perfect. So we will yeah. go to the teaser. We're going to hold you guys right on the edge of your seat. <laughs> yes. One of my Save favorite. Save the best for last. Save the best for last. That's it. Right back from a break. And then we will hear about any events that are going on with the organization, how you can help. Dylan, take us to a break. Hey everybody, it's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy in Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. In a post-COVID world, you may have many unanswered questions regarding your health. Are you looking to live a healthier lifestyle? Do you have a desire to learn more about mental health and enhance your quality of life? Or do you just want to participate in self-understanding and awareness? I'm Frank R. Harrison, host of Frank About Health, and each Thursday, I will tackle these questions and work to enlighten you. Tune in every Thursday at 5 p.m. on talkradio.nyc, and I will be frank about health to advocate for all of us. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant, and on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Join Tommy in his attic. That's right. Every week things on the show. I mean, we do more than two things. We do two things I'm going to tell you about. I help these nonprofit leaders come on the show, tell their story, and amplify their message. And that's what this is about. So the message today is a toy is more than just a toy. 
a bear is more than just a bear. I don't even know where I come from, Gene. I just start singing. I can barely help myself sometimes. The words that <clears throat> sometimes a, a, a statement becomes a song. So let's roll in. You said it was a perfect segue. Let's get right back to that. The conversation okay. around mental health was obviously mental health is strained when a family is going through a challenge like this. Our, I think our societal mental health has been strained and uh, I, I, if anything else, I think one of what, what I would consider a silver lining of COVID, if you will, is that a light has been shown that we've all had these mental health issues and challenges for many, many years. And now we're focusing more on them. But let's talk about this. Was this always a program? Is this a new program? What, what you and I talked about earlier in the week and we're going to talk about now? Yes. Um, new program, Tommy. Um, Encourage Kids Foundation was given a very generous grant last year by Mother Cabrini. And um, Mother Cabrini wanted a direct service program. So Encourage Kids uh, designed and developed a direct service program for hospitals uh, that addressed mental health wellness needs. And we came up with three different kits. Uh, one kit is for kids who had suicidal ideation. The other kit was for um, children and, and older youth who had uh, attempted suicide. And then the third kit was a comfort kit for school age children who had high degrees of anxiety and depression. And I'm, I'm so excited to tell you about this because when I read the evaluation reports, i.e. the results of this pilot program, and we piloted it with four hospitals in New York City that had high need. Um, when I read the results, I thought, oh my gosh, we need to expand this program and scale it nationally. This is too important to contain to just one area. Because Gene is a business builder, gang. <laughs> she said it before. I was waiting to sneak in and say that. He is a business builder. So when I said about the alliance of a leader and an organization, boom, it's not about the leader comes in. So, that, so just to kind of mind the store. No, the leader comes in to accelerate and find opportunities for the organization to grow. In this case, grow nationally. In this case, enhance, rather not enhance, but create new programming, right? That's mm -hmm. what a business yep. builder is. Yeah. Well, yeah, and and you used a, a key word earlier, Tommy. Partnership. Um, we do need some corporate partners who are able to help us scale this program nationally and help fund it, because the result of this program um, were that children felt more comforted, they were soothed. Um, one hospital told us that. It was the first time this young girl had smiled in a long time. And it also gave, um, it, it, you know, the goals, there were three goals for this program. We wanted hospital personnel to have a, a means to connect with children who were in crisis. We wanted to give these children an outlet to create, um, to express themselves, excuse me, to express themselves. Um, and third, we wanted to give these kids um, resources and tools to learn how to cope with anxiety mm -hmm. and to come up with some, some techniques. So if, if you don't mind, I can quickly show you a couple of things that were I in love show and tell it was made oh, in kindergarten was show and tell well one thing you've already seen yes. which is hello teddy. teddy welcome back this to the show a, this is a key element <laughs> key <laughs> element for the comfort kit and then we had um a mini jenga it's a okay. construction toy yeah. Yeah, i see it that was a hot item we got a lot of positive feedback on this you know, my son, one of my sons loves Uno, except he changes the rules like in the middle of the game. And uh, it's not it's not fair, but he's only eight. No, it's not. If he's listening, we have to tell him. <laughs> These mindfulness cards are really important because 
um, they give the, the child the opportunity to talk about their mood. And it also gives some tips on physical activity and um, breathing. So these are pretty key as well. Uh, there were some manipulative toys like Model Magic. This is from Crayola. These silly scents also from Crayola, these pens. Shout out, so is that, am I reading into this the wrong way, but do you have a hookup with Crayola or you end up buying those from Staples or something? Well, yeah, it's, it's funny you ask Tommy because Encourage Kids bought all these. And had I been here at that time, I would have been able to connect us to the manufacturers and we we could have gotten them donated, but that's okay. You know why that's okay, Gene? Here's why it's okay. Because you know, when that question, when they say, when was the best time to plant a tree? You know what the answer is? 20 years ago. You know what the <laughs> second best time to plant a tree is? Right freaking yeah. now. now. So, so now you build a, so get Mr. Crayola on the phone or Ms. Right. Crayola, Mrs. Crayola or Johnny right. Crayola whoever he is, and get him on the phone and say, dude, we need some markers here. Yes. Yeah, so, so this is what we're going to do. Um, these kits were, were really designed um, by a panel of experts from around the country, psychiatrists and therapists. And, you know, we, we worked with the best. So we're going to bring a panel of experts back together. We're going to share the results. We are going to um, refine some of these kits because they were expensive. And when you're scaling, right, you yeah. need kind of a threshold cost wise yeah. in order to make it viable to are share. You, are you fulfilling those like like in your own space or are they like is are they in fulfillment centers somewhere and then drop shift is needed? Great, great question, Tommy. We do have a fulfillment center in Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah. So uh, they were kind of collating and then shipping for us. Not for nothing. I don't know him. But the Oracle of Omaha, maybe you should reach out to him. Um, yeah. uh, you know, he's out there. Why um, Why is his name escaping me right now? I'm only calling him the Oracle. Um, Warren Buffett? Yeah, it's Buffett. He's out yeah. there. That's where he's in. He's got that little yeah. house, like all those years ago. Maybe he can help out with some of the fulfillment. Absolutely. I don't know anybody at Berkshire. I don't know uh, Warren Buffett either, but but somebody's connected to him. Exactly. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I hope you can tell I'm really excited to um to... i'm fired up for you i'm fired yeah. up i, I want to be a part of it i mean like what do you need like are there certain uh, i want to know if there's so you mentioned this corporate partners and i think we talked about a specific industry that you had yeah. your eyes on that you thought made the most sense for partnerships well yeah in, in terms of helping us to fund this well mental health wellness program i think the pharmaceutical industry makes a lot of sense tommy and as well as tech right um, those companies care about kids. Uh, they have kids at their epicenter for a lot of the business lines that they own. And same thing goes with children's licensing, you know, yeah. children's manufacturing, apparel, um, toys, you name it. So I was thinking of industries that have children at their epicenter. Um, we overlap there. Yeah, and it goes back to what we said earlier about this, uh, lack of a better way, corporate social responsibility, but really it is yeah. being, being part of your community. You know, I was out with some folks um, just earlier this week at TD Bank, I think I mentioned here on the show, and I think the term is CRA. They have these corporate responsibility. It's like a, it, it's a, um, it's a requirement of banks that they do certain uh -huh. things in the community. I'm not familiar with it. I can get back with you all on it when- Okay. Dot Horowitz from TD Bank was teaching me about the other day, but it's where, you know, so the banks have this responsibility to do things in market, in community to, to be giving back. So they're supporting everyone, not maybe just, you know, the big time banking clients. So I'm more to come on all that. Obviously, I'm not super well knowledgeable about it, but we'll get you that information because banks could be great too. Absolutely, Tommy. Yes, without yeah. a doubt. So we, because, we're because they have a responsibility to the community. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. What What about upcoming events, a gala? Is there something you need us to help you out with? Something you need us to plug into? Tell us about that. Um, so we have a couple of events this year. Uh, our main gala is June 22nd. That'll be at Cipriani South Street. Okay. Uh, that's our primary uh, fundraiser. And if you can't attend, make a donation. 
Yep, um, right. And no donation is too small. We also have a really fun event in your neck of the woods, Tommy. Okay. There is a golf event. When um, is that? In Long Island. Really? And that'll be July 31st. Where is that? Um, and that'll be at Pine Hollow Country Club. And people can go to our website for more information. Yeah, look at the website. So, gang, I didn't tell you this yet. I shared it on Facebook. So, if you're following us on Facebook, you got it. But it's encourage-kids.org. Encourage-kids.org. And, yes, we do have some golf courses out here on Long Island. Yeah, beautiful ones. And then the third event uh, is Serving Up Smiles. And that is October 16th at Chelsea Piers. And that's a really fun event because we get some of the top New York restaurateurs, chefs, um, we have crafts and cocktails and it's a tasting event. And and that's a blast. That's a great place to to, to attend an event, you know, at the piers. That's a really fun place. Really cool. Really, uh, I'm sure that'll be a good night out. I want to be part of what you're doing. I want to get you connected more to my network. Um, Look, Go to. I'm going to just say this as if this was a networking meeting. Go to my LinkedIn, Gene Butler. Check out who I'm connected to. Tell me who you want to meet, and let's continue this relationship. Thank you to MJ Padone because MJ, if you're not in my corner and sort of like reminding me that I got to get people on this show that are in your world, some of these things don't happen. So shout out to MJ. I'm excited to see you again on Tuesday night. Shout out to the Long Island Imagine Awards. Shout out to the New York City Imagine Awards. The nonprofit sector changes our world Mm -hmm. every moment of every day they're the ones making an impact they're the ones that are helping people in need and without the sector we're in trouble so i'm here to highlight the sector gene butler leave them with anything else before i send them on their way well tommy you're making a difference too hats off to you you're very humble um but but you're you're really playing a large part in improving our world so thank you well, I do appreciate that, and I'm getting better at, at accepting gratitude, but I do say this, Gene, you know, no big deal, just changing the world. <laughs> but it is, I am grateful for your gratitude, and I know what I'm doing is important, and like I said at the front of the show today, I must get louder about problems that we have in our society, because I've, I've realized that it's my responsibility to, I don't have the answers. But I could start the conversations, and that's a lot of what I'm going to be doing. Gene, I appreciate this new connection between you and I. I look forward to meeting you in person. Any way I can help through my network, please don't hesitate to ask. And everybody else, thanks for checking in. And go do your day of service. Highlight a nonprofit. Tell a story about people who are changing the world. That's it. Make it a great day, everybody. Bye, Gene. Thank you, Tommy. Mm-hmm.